Audio Evolution Mobile 5 comes with an exciting new way of routing effects. You may recall this from the first video. Let's listen to this. Synth, it's got this weird zapping sound at the beginning and end of all the clips here. Like, that does not sound good, but fortunately we can fix that in post, right? So on every track, you've got a channel strip, which is this thing over here on the left. And on the bottom of those are dots, and those let you change the pages of the channel strip. So here on the second page, we've got our effects sends and our effects grid. When you click on the effects grid, you're presented with a whole new world of exciting routing possibilities. What you're looking at right now is the signal chain for our effects. So it starts from left to right, starting in the in, going across to the out. So in this case, it's going through five empty spots before it hits the EQ. So whatever our audio is that's coming from our instrument is going through nothing and then into the EQ. And where we hit the EQ, if we make any kind of changes to our audio, those changes are what's gonna be passed along down the chain. So in this case, it will go on to the next thing, a volume, and any changes we make in the volume now will go on to the sends if we're sending it to any external effects, or whatever. And then finally to the out. So it's important to keep in mind how these signal chain operations are occurring because it's whatever is on the left happens before the thing on the right and whatever is happening on the right is going to get the audio that's been affected on the left. So in this case, let's say I wanted to, for some reason, move the volume to be before the EQ and then I do something weird with it. Like I just totally attenuate this down. Um, <laughs> Now I uh, will have this attenuated signal hit the EQ. And obviously you probably don't want to do that. Uh, we can reset that and just drag this back into position. It's like really easy to do all this. It's very intuitive. We just hold down and then we see a, a little box show up and now we can move this around to wherever. We can even move it down to this second row, which we'll deal with uh, momentarily here. But just hold down till you see the square and then move it. Uh, it's really, really easy and fast. And now to add our own effects into this chain, we just need to tap on any of these empty boxes and start adding something new. So let's do that. Uh, let's throw in a three band graphic EQ here so I can really drill in on that uh, troublesome spot. Uh, I know it's gonna be in the, the 4K-ish range, so I'm gonna start by boosting that. Oh yeah, it's definitely there. <laughs> it's a little bit there. A little bit there too. Very sharp there. All right, I've I've gotten it taken care of, but I'm, I'm really making a big chop in my EQ. So let's see if I can bring back some of these mids. All right, that, that sounded pretty decent. Um, so you may notice here that we've got two different lanes at the bottom here, and uh, that allows for parallel routing, where we can take the signal and treat it in entirely different ways in two different uh, tracks. So uh, the way that we do that is by simply tapping and connecting and then saying where we want that to come back in or if you decide that you don't want it to go there, you can just tap and undo that. Uh, so let's make a new EQ. And uh, going back to the first one, I'm gonna drop everything uh, that's below 1K. And on this one, I'm gonna drop everything that's above 1K, but I'm gonna keep 1K itself in because I want to uh, boost the mids. And if you if you screw up, like let's say I screw up here and I actually hit, hit this volume one instead of one of the uh, uh, frequency sliders, double tap on anything and you get the option to re reset everything, enter a specific value or just reset the one you screw up. So now we've got two different EQs that are chopping different frequencies out. So if we bring this back in, we should hear everything together. Yeah, we, we got the lows, we got the, the mid and the highs without the zap, or at least less of the zap. Uh, so now we can say things like, well, okay, let's take this uh, low and let's throw this into a compressor like barricade here. And we wrap that now and we can push this uh, the the actual volume of this effect into the compressor and we can use this like a saturator see so you notice on the right and the left of the effect here we have uh, these VU meters that are showing us the, the relative levels of the input and the output and watch now as I push the output of this I'm clipping here with just that red marker 
but we're not hearing any kind of distorted mess. Even though I'm really pushing that. Um, I can push the mids some more. Like, I'm really pushing this, but it's not a distorted mess because I'm running it into a uh, limiter, which is limiting it down, or a compressor here in this case, uh, which is limiting the gain and making sure that we're staying well within a, a acceptable threshold here. And now I've got a, a whole separate dedicated track here just for this low. Let's do something special for the high here. Well, I'm going to throw in a reverb that's going to be completely free of those uh, low frequencies that you, you tend not to want in uh, a uh, reverb. So let's I tweak this around here. That sounded really nice. So, like, you hear that? Like, that's a very specific, like, high thing that we're doing up there. Uh, we could try to bring some of the mids back in on this. Pump the mid here. All right. Together we got a nice big full sound, but uh, let's say that uh, you decide. Well, okay, I I really want to throw in a delay before all of this. So, <laughs> fortunately, we don't have to start all off. We can just insert a column. So we've got all these different columns here, right? Uh, we can remove them by simply holding down on an empty column space, and it'll ask me, "Do you want to remove the column?" And I can do that. <laughs> or if we want to, at any point, we can just add new columns by tapping on that connection between where we want to insert this. So. Let's do one between the in and the 30 band. And now we need to make sure that we change our routing. So I'm gonna get rid of the uh, route that's taking the in to that second row. And now I'm going to change it to go from our, what's gonna be our delay to the 10 band. So now we can just insert that delay before everything else. Obviously it isn't gonna sound great uh, right off the bat until we tweak it around and find the right delay times that we want. Fortunately, I've got a preset already made that's got a half note at 120 BPM, so it's, it's the correct uh, delay time for me. Now I can maybe mix this down just a bit. And if I decide I have something I like, I can now save this uh, as a new preset. And now that's available to me to select it at any time. If you decide that you don't want an effect in here at any point, you can just use the remove button at the top here. It's gone. Like it's simple as that. It's really, really intuitive and easy to use. Um, we've also got the ability to mute specific effects. Or if you're really like trying to figure out what's what's going on with this track, you can use this power button that's on the uh, left the channel strip here, um, and that will only affect. You see, it's muting these effects here. Like when this is on, all of these effects are now muted that we've added. But the built-in effects and the volume and sends and stuff are not muted. That's a really fast way to just throw out everything that you've done and check, okay, is it is it something I did that screwed this up? And uh, then you can figure it out from there. There are a few things to keep in mind when you're doing anything with these parallel uh, effects routings. So let me use a different uh, track as the example here. I'm gonna use this bass. If I go in now to the effects grid here, there's nothing special going on. Just by making this connection down to the bottom row, nothing's happening because it's not going to the out yet. But when you do send it back up, you're going to hear an, a level increase. All right, so that's adding six decibels because it's combining these two together. Like It's treating these as two entirely separate audios that we're pushing together in, into one. So that's, that's going to give you a boost there. So we can we can control that using the volume here. Like let's say that we want to reduce this second one a bit. And now we can really fine tune it to make sure that we're not blowing everything up as soon as we bring whatever we're doing into the second track back into the first. 